button in five, four, three, two, one. The song ended, ended weird. Yeah. It kind of cut out there at the end. Anyway, I'm just gonna die. <laughs> putting that aside, um, welcome to the second review of the evening. Uh, this time around, we are reviewing The Great Wobo Escape. And no, we're not m mispronouncing that. It's Wobo with a W. No. It's supposed to sound like cute for robot. It might actually in universe be some kind of acronym, but... Yeah. I think we're, they're going with the speech impediment thing. Like, yeah, you know, the the robots. Well, it's like they're not cute, cute, but they look like portal turrets with human arms and legs. Yeah, Th they're kind of cute, but they're not like overly obvious cute. If that is an accurate description, like you could definitely see a plushy figure of this, but. You know, it doesn't feel like it was specifically designed for that either. You know, mm. I, I, I guess another way of putting it is Wally Light. No. Yeah, a little more like E. Well, I guess the wobb wobblings, wobblings you have to save look kind of like Wally, and you look kind of like Eve with legs. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be surprised if Wally was an influence on this game. Wally's deranged cousin Steve. Yeah. And so, um, right, the Great Wobo Escape is another from our maybe not necessarily favorite genre, if indeed one can call it a genre, but um, one of the most numerous uh, game types we get on this program, and that's the mobile conversion. Because uh, I would this game. I wouldn't call it a genre, but a type. Yeah, I guess that's really what genre means, but yeah, I'm like whatever you want to call it exactly. You know, the point is we get a lot of these because um, there are a lot of them out there, and you know, we're the kind of show that gets you know that, mm -hmm. that can get a hold of these pretty easily. Because uh, how do I put this? <sighs> They're easy to get. Uh -huh. Like. Um, anyway, yeah, so this game was originally designed for, from what I can tell, Android devices. Uh, let me see if it's on iOS as well. I mean, I, it's definitely available on Android phones, but I'm not exactly sure if it's on Apple devices. And, yeah, Great Wobo Escape is on iTunes as well. I mean, kind of figures. Mm-hmm. Like, it's pretty rare that you get the game that's on Android, but not iOS. Mm hmm But anyway, the reason I say this is because um, maybe it, it's not quite conveyed in the footage we're showing. And um, a, a bit of an aside, um, we're playing the trailer here, not because we don't we can't get the game running or anything. Which is our usual reason for not, or, or you know, Petty Fan doesn't have the game. Um, he has the game. He's just having some problems with it. When I'd get a certain point in the game, it would restart the level, and I literally cannot progress past yeah. more than like five minutes into the game. I'll be honest. I don't know what's behind that because when I played the game, I had no problems progressing. Um, yeah, I had Me no too. problem. With the game reset so. Uh, we didn't have enough time to figure out what, if anything, is going on there. So, um, enjoy trailer footage. Mm -hmm. To be fair, the trailer makes the game look somewhat competent. Yeah. 
Yeah. Anyway, here, here's the thing. Most of the mobile conversions we get are not platformers. This game is a puzzle platformer, but because it's designed for mobile, it's a pretty rudimentary one. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Like, you can, like, okay, so there's this, uh, there's this ineffable thing called game field. Like, that's pretty hard to describe, but um, you know it when you know it basically and this game just feels like a mobile um game and sure enough it is yeah it, yeah it, it has the, the the platforming is really clunky your jumps are you have a fixed jump arc yeah and and sometimes like if it's not in a place where you can jump it'll generally just not let you jump. Although in a couple times I had him step back a step. Yeah, mo more often he'll take a step back, which that's all great and all, but apparently there's a chase sequence in this game, so good luck. There's also a jump, there's also a uh, duck slash stealth toggle button and an interact button, and uh, that's all there is for buttons, and then your movement is weirdly constrained like you can always generally go left and right but then there are some places where you can go up and down but not always mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and like sometimes the controls for that are kind of awkward yeah the, the movements just feel very canned and um uh restrained in general mm -hmm. and i think some of this is explained in universe by him being a clunky ass robot yeah, no. you you are a wobo, with it's some serial number that's like five digits starts with D. Uh huh. And the first few stages are a training, but to see if the computer thinks that you're, since wobos are designed to be autonomous, to see if you're worth being actually autonomous. And then in the first stage where you actually have control, of course, you find a jail cell full of like disabled wobos or imprisoned wobos. And they say, help, rescue us, save us from the Overseer, and you decide to go take it to the Overseer. Yeah. And it's pretty standard sci-fi material. Like, honestly, this game is pretty standard. Yeah, guess. I was about to say, stop us if you've heard this plot line before, but yeah. Yeah, a lot of this game made me feel like it wanted to be Portal, but wasn't. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> Portal was good. Yeah, you know, I don't know how this plays on a mobile device, but the PC conversion, it just feels clunky and simplistic. I guess things like the limited jump arc could potentially help if you were trying to compare it to... I mean, with a touchscreen, I wouldn't want to try to do a fancy jump like uh, with super variable jump heights and stuff, but it's still very clunky feeling. Yeah. And another thing about this game is... Um, there's no way to sugarcoat it on the PC. It's pretty ugly. Like, I'm looking at mobile screenshots here, and yeah, this game was definitely designed for a, um, you know, a phone screen. It doesn't look too bad here, but on a, um, say, 17-inch monitor, the game just looks blown up, and you can see, uh, like, oh, that it was really meant for a lower resolution, a lower, uh, Maybe not a lower resolution, but a smaller screen. So it looks uglier than it should. You know, granted, th this game isn't exactly um, pushing the polygon counts. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, honestly, in terms of overall development, I'd say mid-tier PlayStation 1 game. You know, uh, it's a little rounder than a lot of PlayStation 1 games, but maybe. Yeah, ma maybe a PlayStation 2 game. But, you know, like, like, if this were a PlayStation 2 game, it'd be, like, the, the simple series level. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly not, you know, Ratchet and Clank or God of War or anything like that. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty simple game in all aspects. Like, and, yeah, I'll be honest, in, in addition to all of the other problems, it's kind of boring. You know, once again, it's this is what happens when you bring the mobile experience to um, a different platform. It just doesn't hold up. Now, I'll note um, 
the levels are actually pretty long. Like, longer than I was expecting. It took about um, maybe 15 minutes to complete a level, which for a mobile-based platform is pretty fucking long. Like, which would ex also explain why it's got save points everywhere. Now, so you're, you're never too far away from, you know, being able to save your game and picking it up for later, even if you're in the middle of a level. Mm -hmm. now, and there are eight levels, so there's not a huge level count. And, you know, surprisingly, it doesn't uh, subscribe to the mobile reward formula. You know, the three uh, yellow stars or equivalent uh, based on, you know, performance, speed, what have you. Um, it's actually, a ba it actually rewards off of score. And there are many ways to um, get score um, coming in. At, like, there is a speed element. There is, like, a part-time. Uh, and if you go over part-time, you know, that doesn't affect anything. It's just, that's a score thing. Um, you know, getting caught by enemies, get, uh, um, not tripping alarms, um, completing mini games. Um, another feature of this uh, game is there are multiple paths in a stage, and some of them offer up mini games that you can complete for various reasons. And there's also a little later on um, these uh, creatures called Wobits, I believe. You know, they're these... Um, they're uh, little Wally-looking things that you have to save. Well, you don't have to save them. They're an extra. Okay, you don't have to save them, but you're ranked. You get bonus completion right. thing for saving them. And that kind of lines up on, you know, where the true focus of this game is. You know, the score and leaderboards. Because it's not a particularly challenging game, although there are some bullshit moments, like the stealth sections. The, the, the robots can be... Um, a lot more uh, attuned than you might think they are. Mm -hmm. Like, like, like if, you, if you're not far away enough of them, they will actually hear you and come back. That happened to me multiple times. I, I'm so used to, um, you know, the, the, the stealth segments, like, once you're, like, immediately behind them, they can't see you or uh, detect you. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it is a thing. Now, and now I'll be honest, I got bored with this game uh, kind of quickly. In addition, yeah, to, there wasn't really much here to hold my attention. Yeah, in addition to just dealing with the very clunky mechanics, like it's not just the controls, which were clearly um, uh, taken from a mobile uh, device. They, they translated fair and well enough to a controller. Although the um, duck and jump were on odd buttons. Yeah, that is remappable, but yeah, by default, um, yeah, jump is the left face button, interact is the bottom face button, and stealth is the right face button. Yeah, that's going to trip you up because th those aren't usual controls by any means. Yeah, you, usually you'd swap jump and interact. On the other hand, the jump arc in this game is so stilted that having it be where I reflexively jump with might actually be a bad idea. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those games with a clunky jump. Once, but, you know, this game isn't really a platformer. It's a side-scroller, because you're not really doing platforming. You do jump over um, crevasses, but you're not really jumping platform to platform. Yeah. I mean, you do a little, yeah, just over pits and sometimes over mul multiple platforms over the same pit, but usually only, like, two or three. Yeah, so... There, there is, of course, the obligatory jump, jump, slide, slide section. Right. Which wasn't that difficult. No, it was just, it, you know, yeah. that's a thing. Like, uh, let's see. Music? I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm, it's one of those, I'm, geez, did this thing even have music? I think so, but I had the sound down because I was trying to listen to something else. I'm like, yeah, it, it wasn't really memorable if it did. Like, <laughs> shows you that, like, really the whole game is pretty unmemorable. Like, I, I doubt I'm going to, like, it's been a few days since I played it because I just got 
bored with it, and it's already fading from memory. Mm -hmm. I probably be uh, about completely gone in the next few days. And uh, that pretty much sums up my experience. Um, what about you guys? Um, it's not the worst game I've ever played, but it's also not something I'm willing to go back to. Like, there's just not a whole lot of interesting stuff going on here that, other than, like, the first few minutes, there's really no need to go back to it. Yeah, even the stuff that isn't bad here mostly makes me think of better games that do similar things. Mm -hmm. Like, especially in the mobile market, there are a bunch of other games that do similar stuff to this that are free or cheaper. And on PC, it's like, it's almost not even worth a bother. <laughs> yeah. So in some good news, the, I, I guess, the pricing tiers are pretty much the same uh, on mobile as they are on PC. Um, on PC, it's, um, what, $4? Yes. And... Um, on mobile, uh, you got the uh, Android page here. Uh, it's one ninety nine for the first set of levels and one ninety nine for the second set of levels. So, to, so it's four dollars uh, across the board, basically. Which, in a way, I, in the mobile version, might be a little bit better, just because if you find you don't like it, then you're saving two bucks. Mm-hmm. I'm like, honestly, this game is so unremarkable. Yeah. Yeah, this no. is a definitely a case of not bad, but not something I'd want to play again, because there's just nothing new here. More than that, it's, it's just not a good experience on the PC. Mm -hmm. Maybe the mobile version, because it's built for that. Yeah. You know, it's just... Usually we don't bother with the mobile versions of things. Yeah, especially paid mobile apps because Yeah. <laughs> maybe when we get a budget someday. <laughs> like probably. Like anyway, um so that's about it on the Great Wobo Escape. And that will uh, about do it for this installment of the Fragments of Silicon Reviews. So, the week ahead. Um, M uh, what's going on in MSP this week? We are having... Let me find him. Um, we are having JP of Egotastic Entertainment. I know um, Mac mentioned them. Yeah, apparently. they do a lot of... They've been talking about the Orville a lot, so this is basically going to be Mac's happy fun time. Like, guess he will not shut up about the fucking Orville. <laughs> this might get him to not talk about it so much, but what the fuck do I know? Yeah, I'm like, I'm not too... Uh, I'm not too optimistic on that end. Anyway, as far as Fragments of Silicon goes, the week ahead... Go, um, Tuesday, October 24th, we have Julian Gallup of Snapshot Games. Uh, so, he is the uh, creator of the XCOM franchise. So, yeah, there's a bit of history there. Uh, I think I mentioned this before. Uh, we may go over an hour here. We may not. Like, it all depends. But there's a lot of history here. More than we usually get for the European interviews. But... Um, Outside of the legacy stuff, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Snapshot Games and their upcoming uh, project, Phoenix Dark. It's a spiritual successor to the XCOM games, which is really interesting because, you know, we, we kind of got a really good re reboot out of that franchise. So, <clears throat> anyway, um, on Wednesday, October 25th, um, we had a bit of a change up in developers and uh, actually secured this uh, developer on Thursday. Um, yeah, it was one of those 
they were available at the time and uh, got things worked out really quickly. Anyway, um, we'll be having Carmine uh, Fanta, uh, Fantarella of Games of Edon. They are the developers of a game called Icebox Speed Gunners. Um, haven't played it yet, but from what I've seen, it looks like it it's a speedrunning first-person platform game. Like um, that Seum game we played last year. I was just about to and, mention that. You know, so it's going to be interesting to see what the differences are there. Um, and uh, reviews coming next week. Um, we've got a special Halloween game in Outlast. We have Glow, and we have, well, Icebox Speedgunner. And I'll note, not everybody got all the co uh, got a code for these. In fact, um, Glow, I was the only one who got a code here. Icebox, um, Penny Fan, I gave a code to you, and I have a code. Outlast was a free game on uh, Humble Bundle, so whoever grabbed that has that. And that's what's shaping up for uh, our Halloween week, basically. Or our, you know, free Halloween week, however you want to frame it. Anyway, until Tuesday, I shall wish you good gaming. See you.